So can you please introduce yourself and your role in this game jam? Sure. My name is Evan Witt. I am running the Tree of Audio at the Game Jam, which is the small collection of composers and sound designers who are providing audio for many of the different teams at the Jam. Nice. Um, what does Tree of Audio mean? Uh, the Tree of Audio was a, it started off as a little club, basically, at the Vancouver Global Game Jam. Up in Vancouver, when they run the Global Game Jam, they have, uh, it's a very large jam, game jam of several hundred people. And when you're running with that many uh, that many people in a game jam, it's very difficult for individual composers to split all the teams among them working individually. Usually, on a small game jam, you will uh, uh, individual composers will just work with uh, they'll they'll take a team and do all the audio for them, or they'll take two teams and do all the audio for them. But with uh, if you have a extremely large group of you know maybe 300 people, then uh, you can form a collection of composers and audio designers and audio programmers and sound designers and even voice actors and uh, then you can split up the work based on those people's skills so that if someone is much better at recording or much better at composing or much better at sound design uh, they can specialize in that area and take on six or seven games just doing the sound design for that or just doing the composing for that so it's a way of splitting the work up basically uh, uh, when doing audio for a game jam Cool. And what's your role in the organizing of the event? Because I heard from Ket and Brian that you had more of a role than just, you know, being here in the audio. Well, Ket and I were, Ket and I had been co-organizers on another game jam earlier. And when he proposed this jam, he wanted me to be part of the, uh, I guess you could say, yeah, I don't know what the term would be. Uh, he wanted me to be part of the organizing team when it was put together. And uh, this honestly doesn't take too much. Uh, it's just a little helping out here and there to get ready for prepping for the game jam. We scouted out the location together. We talked a little bit, little bit about what uh, what needs we would have. I talked about what needs I would have in audio, which is how we got this fantastic audio space for recording. Usually you get no separate recording space at a game jam. We also met and talked about logistics a little and how to, for example, spread the word on the game jam and uh, encourage other people to come to it. I had a bit of an audio circle of friends who I could send out uh, the information. Uh, I, I could uh, go to my little audio circle or email list and tell everyone about the jam. And these are the things that I kind of helped prep for the jam. Really though, my main job here, aside from making sure that all the other sound designers and composers, that they have a good uh, experience while they're here, is just helping with grunt work. It turns out that doing a, uh, not not to put that down at all, turn, do, running a game jam takes a lot and a lot of grunt work. Just you gotta set up tables, you have to put the tables away, you got to get the meals ready, you have to make sure everyone's having a good time, that everyone sits down at the right place and has all the right information that they need. Uh, and But that's that's the sort of thing that makes a jam run successfully and smoothly. You want people to be able to show up to a jam and uh, and have everything done for them, and to be treated uh, in such a way that they can simply comfortably sit, be fed food and now and then, have a base to walk around in, and work and focus. You don't want them to have to worry about anything else. That's very cool. Sounds like you are wearing a lot of hats uh, in this yeah. game jam. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the theme of this game jam? That's a very timely theme, I think, uh, and it's a great choice of theme. Jane, well, sorry, uh, game jam themes oftentimes are focused around creative ideas, and it's good to see a game jam focusing on, uh, well, really on an ideal focused on good, being on being ethical, uh, and I personally am very interested in that topic and I think people who talk to me that, that's one reason why I just could not say no to this game jam uh, people who talk to me a lot I think that's a very tricky and fascinating topic to discuss I talk about it a lot with other media uh, producers people who make music people who write stories uh, or people who uh, for example might be into telling stories through film or online web comics uh, the discussion about how to support a, an ethical uh, program or support an ethical movement or an ethical idea via a medium is a really fascinating and, and intricate and delicate discussion. 
And of course, there's been a lot of talk about that going on in the games industry. And you see a lot of game makers, especially in the indie field, uh, using games to uh, promote a message or to uh, even just to explore um, needed, interesting themes. Uh, the, an example of a game that comes to mind like this would be 1979, or Revolution, this, the game that came out recently that explored the Iranian Revolution. It's a theme you don't really see explored in games very much. And so I wish that uh, games were more focused in general on that. And a game jam focused on social justice is a great way of doing that. Very cool. Um, what's it been like working with all the different teams so far? Ooh, as, as usual, it's always just a flurry of variety, which is fun to see. It's difficult because everyone wants something different. And a lot of teams, especially at this game jam, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's a little difficult because a lot of the teams at this game jam are first-time jammers. And first-time jammers, of course, uh, unfortunately, sometimes don't scope very well. Uh, they don't realize until it's too late how much effort it goes into making even the simplest of games. Uh, the, a great example actually is the work that I'm uh, working on right now where we had uh, 12 lines, roughly, of recorded dialogue to, uh, to incorporate into the game. And that doesn't sound like much, but that's easily, that was over an hour of work for several people when you considered that you needed to find who would say the dialogue, you needed to rewrite the dialogue and edit it, and you needed to uh, try several times to record each line to get a good recording out of it, and someone has to clean that up, and then for each of those lines you need to put that into the game at the right spot and mix that all so that the levels are all the same, and just something as simple as that people don't realize can explode into hours and hours and hours of work. Uh, so. Working with these new teams is, uh, there are those standard challenges, I want to say, but that said, it's especially nice to see the variety of team makeup at this jam. Um, this is probably the first, this is definitely the first jam I've been to of this size where we've had several teams that were mostly female. Um, we've had, uh, we have such good representation of women at this jam and also f of students from different uh, schools, which in my book is a very important topic actually. A lot of times a game jam will become popular in one school and then you'll get a whole bunch of students just from that school. But uh, in this case we have a bit of a wider spread, which I like. Any uh, interesting things or novel things that have come up when working with some of these teams? <sighs> uh, sadly not on the music side. Uh, one novel thing that came up that is was just a difficult thing to work with from a sound design side was the need for a background noises we call it walla in the in the in the sound, in the sound design biz uh, walla that was specifically for a protest or a march. Uh, this sounds kind of straightforward when you describe it that way, but while we were gathering ideas about how to make this, first, for reference, we just sort of ripped some uh, ripped some audio off of YouTube, you know, different looked at different kinds of marches, basically. An example of a tricky decision when doing protest walla is if you hear protesters chanting in the background, what sort of chant is acceptable for the game? Uh, is it acceptable if you hear political messages in the protest? If you don't want politically themed messages in the background protest noise for your game, maybe a solution to get out of that uh, problem is to record protest sounds, or rather rip protest sounds from foreign nations. So that you'll hear these sort of vague phrases being shouted, but you can't really quite make out what they're saying, and of course that's because it's in French, or it's in German. Or you get recordings of things that are far enough away that you can't really hear the shouts, or you can't hear you know, you can hear that someone is shouting on a mi on a microphone, or rather on a megaphone, but you can't quite make out their words. Or maybe you need to uh, mix and match. Uh, or you need to find chants that are uh, politically neutral in general. You know, just chants of, of uh, you know, people saying, heck no, we won't go. You know, well that could be people angry at anything. So you can go ahead and put that in your background noise. Uh, and that's sort of an interesting topic I've never had to deal with before. 
That's cool. Um, how do you, I guess, so you're not involved in any one game in particular or leading a game. You're more so just leading the audio tree, which kind of helps mm -hmm. every different game that needs sound design or music, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you've probably heard a lot of the ideas that are going on for a lot of these games, right? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of, I mean, what kind of impact do you think this type of media promoting this kind of education uh, will give to average uninformed users? Ooh, I think that's a very difficult question. Uh, Unfortunately, it depends a lot on what happens to these games after the jam. If some of these games go on to be uh, played online, or even moderately popular online, this could actually have a very big impact, probably much bigger than people expect. Honestly, there are so many small, tiny indie games that become very popular online, uh, even amateur indie games, that it can, it's, in, it's entirely possible for, uh, for a single game that was created here over the weekend to actually influence several people's lives. The way that this happens, I think, is, uh, is a little trickier. Meaning, for example, on one of our games, it's a very story-focused game and a very character-focused game. And that's a game that's going to impact people more by how they associate with a character than, for example, what they learn about law. One of the games is a little more focused on, I think they, they essentially quiz you a little on aspects of law. And that's a game that's much more educational. That's a game that might even be um, expanded or used by other groups who want to train employees or who want to, uh, are, want to teach their students about an aspect of law. That works a little, a little differently. The point there isn't so much to empathize as it is to um, well, to memorize, really. And games are good at both of those. I think those are sort of two examples of the variety that we have. So what do you think about this game, Jam, incorporating law professionals and students as well, you know, among the traditional mix of developers, artists, and sound designers? Oh, uh, I'm sure just like everyone else has told you, I love it, and I think it's a great idea. But that said, I think it's, it's an automatic for me, meaning... I, in the first place, I would support law professors and students getting involved with anything. Uh, I, th I think that law, and I say this as someone who's very ignorant of law, unfortunately, is uh, it's very easy to be ignorant about law, and I wish that people were more knowledgeable. And it, law, like medicine, is one of those areas where people can feel very... Um, very lost or they can it's easy to sort of feel like well I'm not a lawyer or I, I didn't spend my life studying law therefore there's no purpose in under, understanding it or, or seeing how it affects me uh, I remember vividly I've read one law book in my life and um, and I was shocked at how much it excited me uh, and it was in high school and it was a book just called street law and it all it was was you know 150 pages 200 pages of uh, you know, things like if you make a verbal agreement with your friend for $200, is that legally binding in court? If you want to go to court because of damage that was done to your car, but uh, you don't want to pay all the fees, uh, what are your options? Uh, if What's the difference between uh, civil court and criminal court? Why should you care about uh, licensing agreements? Written in just simple, easy to understand language for people. And I think that's empowering. If people talk so much about law and how powerful it is and how uh, we are so uh, scared about the people who make the laws of the land and we're so very ignorant about what those laws actually are that I'm, I feel like uh, incorporating lawyers and professors and students into uh, media should be done, not just with game jams, but with all media. Sounds like a smart idea. Uh, I like I like how you think you know uh, we're pretty ignorant of the things that rule us and that we're afraid of. Um, I guess any last thoughts about the game jam or the organization or the teams or anything like that? Uh, only that Living Computer Museum is fantastic. I did not know it until I started looking at the space for the jam, and it really is great. It's just 
It's just that simple. I'm going to be bringing friends and family by to check it out. Awesome. Thank you very much, Evan. Thank you.